We, we continue to see opportunities in the equity market, mainly as a result of the ultra-low interest rate that is, that is existing in the world today. Central banks have lowered interest rates to a low rate in response to the financial crisis, and this effectively has a dual effect. Uh, firstly, corporates can borrow at low rates, invest at significantly higher returns, and use that money to either pay down debt, pay dividends, or buybacks. And all of, they're doing, all of that they're doing significantly in excess of the risk-free rate. So that's essentially accruing capital to their equity account and hence to their share price. Uh, the second reason is these ultra-low rates are providing very little alternative for investors. Um, they can leave their money in cash or bonds, but essentially get no return. And equities, which are not expensive versus history, and, and definitely not expensive versus other asset class, provide an obvious place to put that money, and we suspect that trend will continue. The main risks to the environment are essentially anything that threatens uh, this ultra-low interest rate environment. And, and obviously we're dealing with a few of those today with central banks essentially trying to taper, trying to exit um, unconventional stimulus. We suspect they'll do that in a very light touch way, but this is not something we've dealt with before, so it could see rates rise at a rate faster than we would like. Uh, secondly, inflation can come back, which means central banks have to raise rates faster, which again threatens the ultra-low interest rate environment. And, and thirdly, governments could lose discipline on or fiscal deficit on terms of paying down their debt which means investors could lose confidence and hence rates could go higher. All of those three things would push rates higher and then take away the tailwinds that I mentioned in the first question. So the investment process at K2 International is very much a growth investment process. What we try to do is focus on some of the key areas of structural change in the world today and then drill down on those to find the companies that are benefiting from that structural change. Uh, what we generally find is companies that continue to grow revenue over a long period of time, regardless of the cycle, generally their earnings go up over a long period of time and generally their equity prices go up over a long period of time. Our job is to focus in on these key areas of structural change and find the companies that are most likely to grow regardless of the cycle or somewhat independently of the cycle. And then out of those companies, we need to find them at the right price so that we can invest in them and generate returns over the long time frame. Best example of this in history and also going forward is obviously the internet. Uh, the internet is something that came into being less than 15 years ago. Uh, and from that point of view, this was a profound structural change in our lifetime. It changed the way we do business. It changed the way we communicate even this video you're, I assume you're watching over the internet. And out of that, we created all this value. Uh, companies like Google, Amazon, LinkedIn, Facebook, eBay, all well-known terms today, over a trillion dollars of market cap created essentially out of one structural change, the internet. And that essentially has happened regardless of the cycle. Greece has gone broke, Spain's had problems, we had the financial crisis and all of this value was created. Uh, so that's obviously a key area of structural change. Has it all happened? Well, yes, for some companies it has. But going forward, we see lots of different areas where we can still benefit from this structural change and get it at the right price. Uh, we would break the internet down into a number of sub buckets, but obviously connectivity is very important. Uh, cloud computing is very important now as to how you, you, you consume your software. Big data is very important as to how they're using all the data that you create on the internet into, to, to provide products to sell back to you. Uh, obviously the internet companies I mentioned earlier, uh, and then finally even the content companies <coughs> that are distributing this, this information to you. Uh, just to highlight two areas there would obviously be connectivity. Uh, this is a very simple one. You need a fast internet connection to your house. People are prepared to pay more for that. We think the cable companies in the US and Europe are very leveraged to this because they have existing in infrastructure that can double the speed of your internet service. And we find people are happy to pay up for that regardless of the cycle. The other one that's probably not, not as well known would be the content companies. Um, if you look at some of the big content players in the world, be it Disney or Fox, uh, let's talk about Disney quickly. You've got a company here that used to sell you movies via Pixar, via Disney, via ESPN, and via Marvel, and soon to be via Lucasfilms, and they'd sell it via the movies, via, via DVD, and via cable channels. Now they can distribute it over the internet. You can stream it to your house. Uh, that is a whole new source of revenue for them, and that premium content is getting to you faster and better than it was before. Uh, Disney are the masters of this with the Marvel series that they've bought out, and obviously we're gonna get a whole new bunch of Star Wars movies next year. We think this is a structural change for Disney. It creates structural growth yet the company is only trading on 15 times earning and the market hasn't recognised this structural shift yet and we feel we can invest in it early and benefit from it. That would be the best example of how our investment process works, but we can change this across a number of areas, be it in shale gas, be it in emerging consumers, be it in health and wellness. 
So to summarise our product offering, we think here at K2 International, we can provide you, the investor, with the opportunity to invest in and benefit from some of the key structural changes that are occurring in the world today. It is as our job as investors to identify these structural changes, to identify the beneficiaries and invest in them at the right price. And all of that we have to do under a pragmatic framework that recognises that there are risks out there and that those risks uh, can affect the, the market and obviously the currency and we need to manage those for our investors to get them the best possible outcome over the long run, which is to A, benefit from the returns that these structural changes are occurring, but B, protect the downside when the wind turns against us.